morning and welcome to Northumbria Football TV. I'm Matt Kirkman. I'm joining the TV studio today by a very good friend of mine, Russell Hughes. How are you doing? Not bad, Matt. And you? Now, I've heard on the great van, Russ, that you're, uh, you're quite an expert when it comes to women. Early with the football, I know nothing about them in any other <laughs> walks of life. And um, today, we are going to be focused on the women. We're going to be having a bit of a different show. We're going to, we've picked two of our favourite games from the year and we're going to play them out and we'll be having a chat and having a look at, at how they got on. Yeah, and we'll be uh, kicking things off with the Leeds Met game. Our very own Russell Hughes is at the game. Before the game kicked off, both sides observed a minute's silence for World Peace Day. Northumbria had changed their starting formation to 4-1-4-1, possibly to avoid another six-goal loss to the side from Yorkshire. Team Northumbria started the game with only one win from their previous matches, and the fact that the last time they faced Leeds, they conceded six goals on their mind. The opening half was a largely even affair. The half-time whistle sounded with the score at 0-0, as neither side had really been able to get a grip on the game. It was a day where both sides huffed and puffed but struggled to blow the defence down. Five Northumbria, and Harkness in particular, nearly gifted me to go with a poor piece of goalkeeping. Northumbria finally broke the deadlock after Fraser collected the ball on the edge of the area and expertly killed in a long range strike into the top corner of the net. The poly looked to hang on to three very important points and they sat back deeper in their half. However, substitute Mercedes Rialfo conceded a free kick on the edge of the Northumbria area and in a cruel twist of fate managed to deflect in the subsequent shot after the free kick had cannoned off the wall. It was a heartbreak for the poly and Rialfo was clearly upset after the final whistle, but Northumbria can be pleased with how they played and would have settled for a point before the game started. Russell Hughes, Northumbria Football TV, third start. Absolute heartbreak for the play there, finishing the game with one all against Leeds. Ross, you were at the game, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, they played really well and they probably deserved to win that game. I mean, the goal was a beauty, beautiful strike from Izzy and Leeds' goal was like, really scrappy and off a dubious free kick. But in between, they limited the chances. I mean, nothing was keeper, Harkness was a bit shaky, but apart from that, they didn't really have any clear-cut chances and deserved the three points. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Lizzie Fraser's goal there. I mean, what a hit that was. Oh, it was fantastic. And I mean, we'll, we'll see that again now. But she's just, she's got great technique. And it's not a surprise to her because she rattled the crossbar before that. And I mean, she just picks it up and picks a spot straight in the top corner. I mean, you can't ask for more. Oh, it's a wonder strike. It's just so, it's so pure. I mean, it rifles off her foot. And it was, uh, it was actually so good we awarded it goal of the season. Yeah, we did and really deserved it because there were a few other good goals. And I mean, on top of that, Lizzie's been a really consistent player for the Poly so she. I think so. so she's well been deserved. a rocking centre midfield. Well deserved, yeah. Um, but I mean, on, apart from that, Northumbria, really unlucky. And, and Leeds' goal, let's have a, we'll look at that again now, but the Leeds' goal was really, really unfortunate for Mercedes. who just come on as a substitute. She wants to make an impact. I mean, I don't really think that ball's going in a danger area, but even though it's not, the defender still wants to get it. You still want to get a foot out to stop the supply in the area. Exactly. The th thing is, as a defender, your instinct is pretty foot in the way of the ball. I mean, she doesn't know what's behind her. For, for all she knows, there's a strike coming in behind her and ready exactly. to send that home. But it all came from a foul. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a dubious foul, but do you really need to do something like that? We'll watch it now, but... I don't think that she actually needs to put a foot out like that. She's nowhere near the ball. And she just sticks her leg straight across her. Uh, it's just badly timed and it's just begging to be punished. The thing is, you're in, you're in the last 10 minutes of the game, you're 1-0 up against Leeds, who are one of your biggest rivals. Don't make that tackle. Just force her out wide. She She's not going anywhere with that ball. So you can, I mean, I think it was a foul, in all honesty. Referee was right to give it. Just a silly decision by Mercedes. Absolutely, and it could have changed Northumbria's season that way. I mean, it's not, I can't say it's Mercedes' fault, but it certainly had an impact, and that result could have changed the season. I think, I mean, if they won that, they would have been right up there. I mean, because it's such a short season, it's hard to get back um, up. Uh, but moving on, we'll go to the Loughborough game now. Now, at this point of the season, Loughborough had already been crowned champions, and Northumbria had already been relegated. 
So it was a bit of a nothing game, but the girls played well. I bet you Scotty Greystone was at the game. This was a match where neither side had anything to play for. Loughborough had already won the league, whereas Northumbria had already been relegated. Unusually for Dead River, the game was open with Loughborough enjoying initial success down the flanks. Northumbria's best chance came against a shaky goalkeeper who looked uncertain when dealing with crosses. Captain Becky Saliki had the best opportunity to score from five yards out. This was the last chance Northumbria had as the game was called off at half-time due to the horrific weather conditions. Scott Christon, Northumbria TV, Coach Lane. Another good performance by the girls there, but another draw. Russ? Yeah, that's probably the best we've seen them play all season. I mean, they, they got the ball down nicely. They, I don't know if it's because they were on Astro Turf or not, but they were playing the ball along the floor really well, into the feet. Um, Lizzie again, Becky, good games, and they brought in a few second teamers who made a positive contribution to the side. I think the main thing was they were just playing with a bit of freedom. I mean, they already knew they were relegated. Loughborough already champions, so... Absolutely. They changed a bit of formation, changed the squad, and I think it worked. And they had the best chance of the game, of course, with the corner from Saliki. Watch it now, but... Um, she really needs to do better, doesn't she? I mean, the ball comes in, it's whipped in, she meets it, she's inside the six-yard area, she even puts it over the fence behind the goal. She really puts it in the, the atmosphere. I, th I think she just hit it too well, to be honest. It's a centre-back's finish, yeah. you don't want the centre-back. She really the leathers the ball. Like, if, you, if she shins that, that's going in. Well, of course, of course, if it comes off a knee, a shoulder, anything, it would have gone in. But, I'd say, a typical centre-back's finish. But, I mean, there's still... They've got some positives to take from that into the cup games that are coming up. I think, I think they've played a couple now and they've won them, so that's good. And also, not to mention the the massive, massive Stan Calvert. Oh, it's a huge game, and I think I say they can be positive going into them. Still a chance of silverware to get the end of the season. Yeah, absolutely. And if they can finish on a high and move on to next season. Well, I think if they if they get the final or the semis of the cup and they win Stan Calvert, then that really gives them a boost going into next year, and it lets them like. You know, rebuild their confidence and they can really use that as a platform to build from. Definitely. So, looking over the season, in with the league uh, specifically, what do you think went wrong? I think their defence let them down at times. They conceded too many goals. I mean, they're, they're not really a great goal-scoring outfit. Mate, I think the, like, the wide play needs some work. I mean, they don't really attack the full-backs or anything. But I think the defence, and especially in the manner that they conceded the goals, would have been deeply frustrating for Becky and Amber. Yeah, I think... As you say, I think it's just a lack of depth throughout the squad, to be honest. They lost a few players last year, obviously moved on to bigger and better things. But we'll see what happens next year. Obviously, speaking of losing players, Becky Saluki. Yeah, she's going to be a big miss. She controls the game from the back. She can distribute the ball well. So they're going to have to try and replace her. It's not going to be easy. It's, it's not just a playing ability, though. They've got to replace the captain. And she's a exactly. big voice in the dressing room, I've heard. Yeah, absolutely. And that's going to be a big task for Amber now. And... But we'll, we'll see how she does. We'll yeah, look we'll, forward to the next season. We wish Becky all the luck. Uh, see how she does in the future. But we're looking positive for next year. Hopefully they'll bounce straight back up. Ian Holloway's famous bounce back ability. Hopefully they can utilise that. And we look forward to seeing them back in the top league, not next year, but the year after. Uh, and that's it for, from us in the studio. I've been Matt Kirkman and you've been watching Northumbria Football TV. Goodbye. Goodbye.